Aloha everyone! This is Jiko here at Daifukuji Soto Zen Buddhist Temple in Kona on the island of Hawaii. And today we're in the temple kitchen where I would like to demonstrate an easy method to make your New Year's mochi. Every year, our youth groups, Youth Taiko Group and Young Buddhist Association uh, with the help of Sangha members, puts on a grand mochi tsuki. And we make, I think, thousands of pieces of mochi for everyone's New Year's needs. But this year, due to COVID-19, we are unable to hold our annual mochi tsuki. So some people in the community are already worried about where they're going to get their fresh mochi with which to welcome in the new year, which is a very cherished Japanese tradition. So um, I came across um, an old recipe for an easy method for making uh, plain mochi for your new year's kagami mochi. And today I'd like to show you how to do it so that if you cannot buy mochi, um, you can try this method, but I would suggest maybe practicing once before the new year new year's comes new year comes Okay, so the recipe we will put it in the box below But I also had put it in the temple's newsletter It's our December 2020 newsletter, which is available on our website um, www.daifukuji.org so now when you make mochi, you need to purchase mochi rice. You cannot use just any kind of rice. Um, please buy what is called mochi gome, mochi rice. It's called um, short grain sweet rice. Mochi gome, it's gluten free and um, it is very it, very glutinous so that you will the result will be a nice um, sticky ball of mochi which is what you want so remember don't use just any kind of rice but be sure you purchase specifically um, mochi rice any any brand will do this one is koda farms um, Shochiku by Mochi Gome, which is a very high quality product. Um, what you're also, so basically for this recipe, you're just using mochi rice and water. Mochi is a very pure food. We need a few other things. Um, we need some Katakuriko, this is a potato starch. You can find it at an Asian grocery store. And if you cannot find potato starch, um, you can use cornstarch. Uh, but this is to prevent the mochi from sticking to your cutting board, sticking to your hands. Um, that's what we'll use it for, to dust our mochi. Okay, so let's get started. So yesterday, I um, scooped out one and a half cups of this mochi rice and I washed it. I put my rice in a colander, something like this with very small holes so the mochi rice doesn't get stuck in the holes. Um, if you don't have something like this, you could just wash it in a, in a regular mixing bowl and drain the water. So you wash it a few times um, drain the water out and then add one cup of water and then you would soak your mochi rice and one cup of water in a bowl like this one and I soak this overnight. Soak it for at least four hours but I find that it's better um, the longer you soak it the better easier it will be um, to grind it up in the blender because we'll have to pulverize this or liquefy it in the blender. So here, this was soaked overnight. Again, one and a half cups of mochi rice and just one cup of water. Soaked overnight. 
Okay, let's now go over to the blender. And um, it's important that you have a high-powered blender, uh, such as the one I'll be using, because you don't want to burn out the motor of your blender. Okay, let's go over to the blender. We're going to pour this into the blender and blend it on high speed for three minutes until the mixture is smooth and liquefied. So here we are. I have a Ninja blender, which does a great job. I already made a batch of mochi earlier, so this is to show you. So I'm going to just pour all of this into my blender. Water, rice, and all. blender of course until the mixture is um, liquefied. Here we go. Uh oh. Uh oh. Good. Looks good to me. Oh, I don't know if you can see this, but it is liquefied. Okay, so the next thing we have to do is to pour this into a microwavable dish. You can use something like this, you can use whatever you have a bowl, microwave bowl. So what I do first to prevent the mochi from sticking to the bowl is to spray it with some cooking spray. If you don't have cooking spray, I guess you could use some kind of cooking oil. But, okay. Then we're going to pour this into a microwavable bowl. It's beautiful. Microwave oven. 
for about four minutes on high. Of course, depending on your microwave oven, but approximately four minutes on high. And after it's done, you leave it inside the microwave oven to sit for an additional three minutes. Okay, so here we go. Put this here. Four minutes on high. Okay, so I've just taken this pan of mochi out of the microwave oven. So it was, it cooked in the microwave on high for four minutes. And then after it was done, it sat in the microwave oven for another three minutes. Just to give it a chance to um, solidify a little bit. The next thing we're going to do is our dog is barking. I think she realized she can see us through the window. Um, sprinkle this with some water. So just lightly sprinkle your mochi, the top of the mochi, with just a little water. Um, perhaps it's dried out a little bit during the cooking. So I'm gonna just sprinkle it with a little bit of water to moisten the top. You don't need very much. Okay, so here it is. Okay, so here we are. Here we are. Okay, so I have my cutting board here. I put a piece of parchment paper over the top anything to prevent the mochi from just sticking to the board. And then I sprinkle this katakuriko potato starch. I generously sprinkled it over this board. Like I said, if you don't have this or you aren't able to obtain it, you can use cornstarch. Okay, now we're going to turn um, this mixture of mochi, right? onto the board and it comes right out since we sprayed it with some cooking spray. Okay, so I, I'm using gloves today. Um, if you don't use gloves, uh, be sure that you generously dust your hands with the katakuriko, the potato starch, to prevent the mochi from just sticking to your hands. So here we go. I'm going to roll it a little bit. I hope you can see this into a log. In this um, katakuriko starch. Yeah, we'll roll it in the starch. If you have an excess of powder on your mochi, um, later on you can use a brush, a pastry brush or something to uh, brush off the egg the excess. So, okay, I've got it into a log. I hope you can see this. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make some plain, small pieces of plain mochi. And the plain mochi um, will be used for a New Year's Day soup called ozoni, which is um, our traditional um, soup for the new with which to welcome in the new year so here we go we're going to make the small plain mochi remember this this is just um uh, the mochi rice and water so i pinch it off a little bit here the size of mochi that i want and then i'm going to if you can see pull the edges of the mochi in toward the center and pinch it in toward the center. When you do this, what you're left with is a nice smooth top like this, which you could then roll and you can shape your mochi. So it's still nice and soft and it's very shapeable. So here's a piece of, we call it komochi. 
small piece of mochi for our New Year soup. So I'm going to make a few of these. I'll put them again into a pen, into a tray lined with parchment paper or wax paper. And I'll teach you. I'll teach a trick that I recently learned. So sometimes you try to line a, a bowl, a dish with parchment paper, and it doesn't. Um, it, it tends to want to curl up and doesn't line the bowl nicely. So what you do is you crinkle it all up into a ball like this. And then you open it up. Then it's ready to line whatever container you need to line and it will actually stay flat. So I'll put the cold mochi into um, this tray. Now if you don't have parchment paper and you're putting the mochi directly on the plate, be sure to sprinkle a little bit of your katakuriko on there so that the mochi doesn't stick to your plate. Okay, here we go. We'll make a few more. Again, pinch, pinch toward the center like this and roll it into a nice komochi. Pinch it off. And we're going to do this. So this is for, you can use this in your ozoni soup. The kind of soup you make um, depends on what part of Japan your ancestors came from. There's different people, different kind, have different kinds of soup for each region. This plain mochi is also very delicious fried. Remember, after what it's nice and soft now, but after a while, it's going to harden. And then before eating it, um, you will want to perhaps fry it in a frying pan with a little bit um, of oil or cooking spray or butter or um, whatever you like to use. And you can fry front and back until it's, it's, it becomes nice um, and a little bit crusty. Okay, some of you like mochi uh, filled with um, red bean paste. And this turns this mochi into a Japanese sweet. Um, and we, red bean paste is called anko and it is um, sold in the local grocery stores. You can buy it uh, in cans. Sometimes you can find very kinds of an or anko in, in packages. And oftentimes what I like to do is I look at the sugar content on the back and um, I choose the one with the least amount of sugar because um, anko is basically just um, azuki beans cooked with sugar. So, um, or some people make their own, then they can control the amount of sugar in the anko. So what I did was I um, opened this can, which, which I had available, and I shaped my uncle into little balls, and I popped this into the refrigerator for a little while. I, you don't have to do this, but I think it makes it easier when you try to um, insert this ball of uncle into your mochi. So to make an mochi with red bean paste, again, Okay, pinch, pinch off the, the amount that you need. Flatten it, yeah, kind of flatten it so that you have something that looks like um, a little, little mochi pancake. Okay, let's see if I can, I'll use a spoon to scoop out my ball of uncle and put it right into the middle like this and then I'm going to pull up the sides of the mochi and again I'm going to pull toward the center and pinch it right here in the center okay then again shake it we always like to have our mochi nice and round and there is symbolism to this as well it um, as we start the new year we don't want to sh start the new year with any sharp edges to our heart or mind we want 
ourselves, our character, our personality to be nice and round, meaning very tranquil and serene. No sharp edges to poke anyone at the start of the new year. Okay, so here it is. This one is filled with anko. I'll make one more. Again, okay, get a bigger one, pinch it off. I'll flatten it out. Put in a little ball of this anko. If you don't have time to make the little balls, you can scoop it directly from the can um, and then fill up your mochi. But I think this just makes it easier and your balls are more uniform this way. Okay, pinch, pinch toward the center. Round, round. And try not to get the anko on the outside of the mochi like I did. <laughs> Beautiful, beautiful mochi. So these are, the, the ones filled with anko are, are eaten just as is. Um, what did I want to show you? Oh yes. So, um, just like this, mochi tastes so wonderful um, with a cup of green tea. Or if you like coffee. We're in Kona, so Kona coffee, right? 100% Kona coffee. Um, some people like their mochi um, dipped in a mixture of something called kinako. And kinako is uh, roasted soybean flour. It says kinako, uh, soybean flour powder, again, from the local grocery store. And um, this is just um, ground up roasted soybeans. Oh, it's nice because it has lots of protein. So I've added like a teaspoon of sugar into this bowl. And I'm just going to put a generous amount of kinako in here. I'm guessing maybe about two or three teaspoons. Um, and then you can um, mix it up and you can dip your mochi in here. And it tastes oh so delicious with Kinako with a little bit of sweetener. Another way that we like to eat our mochi is that, let's see, after it is fried, um, again, I just use a little bit of sugar. Um, if you don't use sugar, you can use um, another kind of sweetener. I have used liquid stevia in the past, a few drops of the stevia, and um, I like it. And you just have a little bit of sugar, you mix it with shoyu, yeah, soy sauce, whatever kind of soy sauce that you like and have available. You just mix it up, sugar and shoyu, stevia and shoyu, what kind of sweetener you want to use with soy sauce. If it's too strong, if the soy sauce is too strong, just add a little bit of water to dilute it. And then when you, um, you can fry your mochi, your plain mochi, you can fry it. And then um, you would dip it into this soy sauce and sugar mixture. And it's very delicious. Uh, what my daughter and I like to do is uh, we get a, sh a piece of toasted nori, the toasted seaweed. We wrap this up in a piece of toasted seaweed, sort of like a, uh, musubi, and then we just dunk it into the, the, the shoyu and sweetener, and it's so good. So the last thing, thank you for hanging in there, I'd like to talk about is something called um, kagami mochi. And I'm going to talk about kagami mochi. Kagami mochi is the mochi offering that is placed um, on the Buddhist altar. On a, or a, a Shinto uh, Kamidana alt altar or um, just in your home. If you don't have an altar, um, you can place kagami mochi um, in your kitchen, in whatever room you like. Um, and it is to invite uh, blessings and good fortune for the new year. So traditionally, kagami mochi is placed on something 
like this. This is called a sambo. And oftentimes at the local grocery store, you can find some special um, good luck paper that they sell um, with beautiful pictures, sometimes of the seven gods of good fortune or some kind of good luck uh, picture on it. Uh, but since I don't have that, I'm just using a plain sheet of white paper. And this is where um, you can use the same recipe that we just used. And that one recipe will make you one set of kagami mochi. So earlier, with the, using the same recipe, I made one large mochi flattened, which I'm going to put here. It's good to, um, like I said, if you have a pastry brush or something, dust, or just dust off the excess um, katakuriko. And I'm going to place it here. Okay, this is going to be a New Year's decoration for the house. And you would have a smaller piece of flattened mochi to place on top of this one. So it's a stack of two mochi. Of course, the, the larger piece on the bottom, the smaller piece on the top. So one of our temple kupuna, one of our temple elders taught me a trick because um, you would leave this mochi out usually for um, a few days. I think in Japan they put it out before the New Year and put it away. Uh, but here in Hawaii, a lot of us put out our kagami mochi on New Year's Eve so that it will be there on New Year's Day. Uh, particularly here at the temple, um, we hold a doyan no kane service at midnight and then a service, uh, blessing service on New Year's Day. When uh, people come to the temple, we like to have the kagami mochi offered to the Buddha um, and Bodhisattvas on our various altars inside the temple. So if you leave the mochi out, it tends to get moldy. And the mold oftentimes will grow where these two mochi pieces are stuck together because there's no airflow here. So one of our temple members said what she does is she folds up a piece of gauze or a piece of a paper towel like this one and she places it between the two mochi just to separate and give it a little airflow before the two layers and this helps to retard the growth of mold just under this so you can do that if you wish and then with kagami mochi traditionally you will put a tangerine with leaves on the top um, Sorry, I didn't have one with leaves, but try to find one with fresh leaves. Okay? Just, just a few fresh leaves. Um, so the, tan the tangerine, um, it, in, Japan, in Japan, they have a citrus called Dai Dai. Here we um, think it's kind of a small mandarin orange. Um, here we don't have them so much, so we use tangerines a lot. Um, Dai Dai is a word that also means generation after generation. So by placing the Dai Dai on top of the mochi, um, you do so with the wish that um, your family will be healthy and uh, prosperous and can do well generation after generation. Uh, kagami means mirror and the mirror is a very sacred uh, symbol um, in the Shinto religion. In Shintoism, it is a, considered a sacred object. Um, from the Buddhist standpoint, uh, Kagami mirror is something I was told by a Buddhist priest that um, shows our own reflection. And um, part of our practice is always to reflect upon ourselves, upon um, our thoughts, our words, and our deeds. And we would like our thoughts, words, and deeds to be pure, kind, and beneficial. Always beneficial um, to others. May we cause no harm and live with um, compassion, 
live with kindness. So here we have um, New Year's Kakami Mochi. And um, I have this little um, Kadomatsu decoration, but that's for another video to explain what this is. A traditionally an arrangement of bamboo, pine, and uh, plum blossoms is also used as a New Year's um, decoration. Okay, so everyone, um, thank you so much for joining me here in the kitchen at Daifukuji Soto Mission. Um, I will put the recipe um, in the box below. May you have a safe, happy, healthy, and prosperous New Year 2021.